Well, silver has been my fight for the last, what is it, 17 years now, and mm-hmm. really getting down to the nitty gritty of who's doing it, why they're doing it, and how long will it last. Right. Uh, we we figured out who's doing it. We figured out why they're doing it. We just need to know how long it, the price will be suppressed. And now is not the time to go sell your silver and, and get into the cryptos even. Now is the time to uh, secure your silver, make sure it's in your own possession, and be ready for some chaos in the silver market. So you, you had some information regarding J.P. Morgan and you know their, their, their whole hoarding of silver. Now, is this an indication of them preparing for what could be an inevitable rise in the price of silver essentially uh, them winning on both sides right you know winning uh, keeping it down and then winning if the price goes up well this is hasn't been a jp morgan specific uh, operation the whole time jp morgan has been involved since uh, i mean majorly involved they knew about it obviously the, all the big banksters knew about the uh, need to suppress the price of gold and silver and the U.S. government is kind of the ringleader in that, the U.S. Treasury Secretary and the Exchange Stabilization Fund. And all, all they really needed uh, to do it in the past 40 years is computers and derivatives. And those came into play in the 1970s. Um, so J.P. Morgan took over the big short position uh, that Bear Stearns had. And the takedown of Bear Stearns was, was all about their silver <laughs> and trying to destroy the bad guys, as I call them, the bad banksters and the people who control our government. And uh, it, it is an amazing story. So J.P. Morgan took over the control of silver uh, from Bear Stearns and has held that position um, since what, whenever Bear Stearns went down, that was 2007, 2008. And at first they were just, going to just sit back and keep the price low but then i think they figured out what a huge story silver is and the difference between uh the electronic silver that is priced on the comics and the lbma and the real physical stuff and they they are really two different animals the electronic silver price is is something that they can easily control with computers and derivatives the uh physical metal prices is is, uh, is something that they can control, but they can't control when people take delivery of silver. So they've been um, hoarding physical silver on the side while they keep uh, rigging the price of silver lower and lower. Really, really interesting. Um, completely legal if they have the nod from the U.S. government, which they do, um, and the U.S. government has the legal authority to control all markets um, since the in advent of the uh, invention of the Exchange Stabilization Fund back in 1934. Really interesting stuff, but uh, yeah, silver hasn't been freely priced probably since the mid-1800s, so that's kind of what everybody's waiting for. So Bix, and then the significance of J.P. Morgan hoarding silver, it, it might be clear uh, but I, I want you to, I, I want you to, to explain that they're waiting, they're they're hoarding it for the big price movement, or is their intention to artificially suppress the price indefinitely? Well, no, the, the intention they don't need physical silver to suppress the price. Currently, the amount of s- silver traded every year uh, is approximately 300 times the amount of silver <laughs> that's, uh, that's physically available. Right. Uh, if you, if you believe that the amount of silver physically available out there is about, uh, 600, uh, or 6 billion ounces, which is about right. About the same as gold. Uh, but the, it's really unlimited the amount of electronic contracts they can throw at, sale or buy contracts they can throw at silver and a lot of it is just these banks trading back and forth to control the price because that's that's the real meaning behind the silver price suppression is to control the price of uh silver and gold and oil and almost all commodities in order to um manage and run the unbacked fiat monetary system 
that is in place. And, you know, usually when you go off a gold standard, it's, you know, eight to 10 years and the system falls apart. But this one's been going on for 40 years, which is amazing in economic history. Um, and the whole reason that's happened is the invention of computers and computer programs by Alan Greenspan. And, the, you know, the programs written by Greenspan in the 60s were an amazing revelation. And Greenspan uh, was the guy who wrote the programs that caused the problem for Y2K by putting only two digits in. So yeah, this this whole system has been rigged since the 60s and JP Morgan is currently, according to Ted Butler, hoarding over 500 million ounces of physical silver. Um, whether or not you know their intention is unknown. They, they They'll either, they're either holding the physical silver so that when the silver manipulation ends, they will benefit from it, or they're holding it for the U.S. government, which is also possible because they have claimed in court that they're an agent for the U.S. government, hmm. or they're holding it, you know, the, the, the new one out there, they're holding it for um, the deep state and what's going on at uh, CERN in Europe the uh the facility might need a lot of silver out there and uh that's that's a new one but it's uh it's out there kind of like the uh silver that was needed at the y12 facility uh for making the first atom bomb it was uh 3.5 billion ounces of silver were borrowed from the u.s treasury to make the first atom bomb wow. crazy stuff when you when you dig behind the scenes um, but yeah definitely a lot of signs pointing to the end of uh, silver price manipulation, mainly because uh, the it has become so obvious to anybody who takes five minutes to look at the facts, and they are having a hard time finding people to run the LBMA silver fix, and uh, I think the same thing will happen on the comics. The comics, of course, doesn't claim to be a physical market like the LBMA does. Uh, LBMA claims to be a physical market, but they transfer over 130 billion ounces of silver every year, which right. is ridiculous. Right. <laughs> uh, Bix, you know what? I, I want to transition on that note to the cryptos. You're excited about them. I, I'm excited about the cryptos, what we're seeing. But unfortunately, what we're seeing in cryptos kind of bypassed the majority of the people who've been concerned about the economy, concerned about money printing, and uh, Ethereum has gone from what ten bucks to three hundred fifty dollars in a very short time here, and many were hoping that was the move uh, silver is going to have or or will eventually have. Um, and so I'd like to get your thoughts here. Let's just start off with Bitcoin as just a general intro into your thoughts on on cryptocurrencies and, and their role here in in what we are going to see going forward and um you know i i guess is it a problem for for gold and silver or is the attention being taken away from uh these historical monetary metals or is the the new technology basically shifting the direction where sound money will go in the future. Well, I, I think there's a, a huge uh, misunderstanding um, of the, the people who are the staunch gold and silver bugs and the people who are in the cryptocurrencies and, and those of us who straddle both worlds. The misunderstanding is that you know, it is a, a deterrent for gold or silver that the cryptos are going crazy. It is not at all. I mean, the cryptocurrency people are, are more anarchists than the uh, gold and silver people. They know exactly what's going on in gold and silver. They know about the computer rigging, um, but they have found a new technology that is an amazing technology. And, the, and if you think about it, most of the people in the cryptocurrencies are saying, this is an amazing tool, amazing way to get around the current banking system without going through all the criminality. So as the cryptocurrencies increase in price and with the mindset of the most of the cryptocurrency uh, uh, investors, they're going to be spending their, their crypto earnings on physical silver and physical gold. I mean, I can't think of anything better 
for releasing the price of, of silver from manipulation than everybody in the cryptocurrency world taking 10 or 20 percent of their gains and buying physical silver mm-hmm. i mean that's that's the real achilles heel of the silver manipulators is the physical side and I, th- I think it's the greatest thing ever for silver is that the cryptocurrencies have come around and everybody who says, oh, my God, all this money is going over to the cryptos and they should be going into the silver market. Well, yeah, it's it's true. That money would have gone into the silver market, but it would have gone into the electronic silver market. <laughs> mm. That's the reality of, of what the silver market is. The, the LBMA and the COMEX and SLV is all it's all electronic silver. So. I think uh, what you're seeing now is a, another uh, avenue to get away from the current system, the unbacked fiat monetary system that is controlled and manipulated by the bankers. Um, and silver and gold were the only choices in the past, but now it's silver, gold, and all the cryptos, which is a great thing. And it should be understood as a great thing for anybody in the gold and silver world. You know, once you. Once you break your mind away from that, you know, the, the staunch belief that the only kind of money there is, is the money you dig out of the ground, then you can start to open your eyes and see, oh my God, this technology is amazing. The, the blockchain is a truth machine. Mm. And we, we can really use a truth machine in the uh, in the in the world of currency because I'll guarantee you there's a lot more gold out there than what they're saying and a lot less silver. So. It's one of those things that it's hard to argue against the cryptocurrencies better being a better form of currency than gold and silver. Hmm. So is that, are you saying sell cryptos to, or sell a portion of, of the cryptos to buy silver because you think that we're at somewhat of a potential top or is it a better idea to no, no, allocate no. other cash? you know that you no, might no. have we're, we're, yeah we're, we're so far from a top in the cryptos it's you know, anybody who comes out and says oh my god it's a bubble uh, doesn't recognize that 99 percent of the people they know personally have no idea what the cryptocurrencies are that mm-hmm. my friends is not a bubble when everybody who owns a cell phone has bitcoin mining chips on their cell phone and is talking about the next cryptocurrency that will be a bubble so I equate this, I like to look at this as the, kind of like the invention of the World Wide Web in, in 1990, when the, that invention changed the way we did business. Absolutely, and all the dot-com companies came out and, and the infrastructure was built and it became a huge thing. And I was right there in the middle of it, right near Silicon Valley and I didn't take advantage of it when it was there. Mm. So I, I, I recognize this change and the exact same thing is happening right now. I remember everybody saying, oh, this computer stuff is all in a bubble in the early 90s. This is the early 90s of that kind of monumental transformation. So every single business in the world will be touched by the blockchain technology. And the big banks are starting to recognize that. The hedge funds are definitely starting to recognize that. And they're they're placing their bets right now for the long term. So yeah, I think, uh, I don't think we're even close to a bubble. I, and I'm not telling anybody to sell their cryptos and get into silver and gold yet. It, but you know, if you are up 200, 300, 400, 500%, it, it could be a good idea to start buying some physical silver because the moment that the physical silver uh, manipulation ends, you're going to see physical silver go to a price of a free market price that hasn't been seen in 150 years. Yeah. So it's it's really exciting there, but at the same time, it would destroy the system. So it's kind of it's one of those things. Yeah, you, your silver will go through the roof, but you know you won't be able to spend it on anything because nothing will be functioning because it. All the banks are destroyed. So it's well, kind of a yeah, yeah. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Well, so in terms of Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominated the market for the longest time. It was ninety percent of the market, eighty-five percent of the market cap, and here we have Ethereum. You know, really a stone throws away from overtaking Bitcoin's market cap. Um, and you know we saw that massive run up and you know hit 400 and, and it you know almost it seemed like it was going to overtake 
uh, Bitcoin's market cap there. But what's interesting about Ethereum is all the big players are backing it with this Ethereum alliance. You have Microsoft, Intel, BP, JP Morgan, and many more joining this alliance. And it makes me think that these guys aren't going to get screwed. And Ethereum might be the place to be in terms of the the big boy on the block overtaking Bitcoin potentially. Uh, so I just would like to get your thoughts on you know Bitcoin versus Ethereum and you know some comments on what I just said. I, I think they're two different animals that you're talking about. One is a a currency, a means of exchange and a store of value. That would be Bitcoin. Uh, it was the first mover. All the all the money going into Bitcoin is going into the infrastructure of making sure that it's a a a sound form of currency and a means of exchange and a store of value. Um, all it, and so that that's Bitcoin's calling. There's not much else other than using the blockchain. Now the blockchain is a, a byproduct of of the Bitcoin protocol. And that's what Ethereum is attaching itself to. Ethereum is a tool for every company in the world to access the blockchain technology. What the blockchain technology is, it's a truth machine. You can't lie on it because everybody has to approve all transactions. So it is really two different things we're talking about when we talk about Ethereum and we talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a currency. And a means of exchange, a store wealth, the same thing like a, a dollar or gold. The Ethereum platform and the Ethereum tokens and all the companies that are going to access the blockchain technology through Ethereum, all of that is something completely different. It is a tool, a way to, to uh, create smart contracts that you can't lie. It takes the lying out of business. Mm. It's an amazing thing. Because I mean, you just look at stuff like uh, who was Bernie Madoff's banker, J.P. Morgan. Every single transaction went through J.P. Morgan. Why didn't J.P. Morgan get arrested like Bernie Madoff did? They knew everything that was going on. This technology takes the lying, cheating, and stealing out of the equation, and it's an amazing thing. So I think, yeah, I think Ethereum will blow by the market cap of Bitcoin. Even the price of a single Ethereum token will probably blow by the price of a of a uh, Bitcoin token or wow. Bitcoin currency. So yeah, I, I am absolutely pro uh, Ethereum. There'll be bumps along the way, just like everything. I mean, there's bumps today because there's a new ICO and and which is an initial coin offering, and the the Ethereum blockchain is delayed for 12 hours. I think something ridiculous, and but that's that's normal for something new. Yeah, the early days of the World Wide Web, everything was so slow when people started wanting to use it. They're saying, "No way, no way, we'll be able to do transactions. Everybody will be on the on the online at the same time, and there's not enough room." And what happened? It yeah, you know, we're doing video. We're doing all kinds of things um, over the internet. The same thing is going on with the cryptocurrencies. They're working on all the issues and problems. As soon as a new problem comes up, they fix it, and it gets stronger and better. And and that's the future. Hmm. And I'm I'm really excited about knowing because I went through it in the 1990s and watched the World Wide Web grow into the internet, grow into online everything. I can see it from the very beginning stages of that happening right now with the blockchain technology. So, and then just to be clear, it doesn't concern you that, you know, the CME group, JP Morgan, and these big banks and, and mega corporations are attaching themselves to Ethereum and, you know, well, you, we know what they do to silver, you know, or at least JP you know, Morgan does. So um, it's you, that doesn't concern you then uh, in terms of Ethereum. No, no, not at all. And, and the, the key is that the blockchain technology, you can't lie in that world. And so if a, if a bank comes in who's used to lying, cheating, and stealing comes in to use the blockchain technology, they can't get away with it. That's the beauty of it. Now they're going to try to invent their own coins, which are, uh, I would say, questionable at best. Coins like Ripple that uh, banksters control. But we don't have to choose their coins. We don't, we don't have to choose 
and any company that does, you know, God bless them. Good luck to them because these criminal corporations and banks are known for trying to get away with anything they can. And that is the key. If they would have, if they could crush the blockchain technology and crush Bitcoin, they would have by now. And they can't because everybody is confirming every transaction. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a really beautiful thing. I was speaking to someone earlier today who was just bashing the blockchain technology, calling it fiat currency, calling it but something who, that's not I mean, who would even I mean, it all it takes is 10 minutes of study to to get a handle on on just how important this thing is. But p- that's the thing. People are so stuck in their ways, especially the gold and silver guys that I am now fighting gold and silver people about this, which is hysterical because I was one of them. I was completely hard assets only. They have to be dug out of the ground. You know, 5,000 years of history. I was clueless and it cost me a lot of money because I could have got in Bitcoin when it was 10 bucks. Yeah. And I was, I was clueless because I didn't understand what, what the technology was. I didn't understand that everybody in the world, it is open, it is honest. Everybody sees the transaction, approves the transaction, and that's the only way it can move forward. Yep, and you know what? The one argument that I see as very valid is the fact that even though Bitcoin is limited in supply, and uh, Ethereum actually isn't at this point, but- um, Well, well it's, got, it's, got, it's got limitations on the amount of it's not a hard limit. It's not like 21 million coins, but there's limitations as more people adopt it. Sure, sure. Yeah, but so my point, not- my well, even with that, my point is that as we are now approaching what almost a thousand different cryptocurrencies on CoinMarketCap.com, that's where the the dilution of the crypto space can be had in in my opinion it's not like you can just create a a bunch of different golds or a bunch of different silvers even though they are right i guess they are with the with the paper money you can you can you can use different things as money if if gold doesn't work you can use silver copper zinc Uh, you can use anything you know it's it's kind of i've heard that argument before but everybody's lumping cryptocurrency into one thing and every single one of them is different some have some are complete scams some are better some are worse but i mean what has been used as money in the past they've used seashells and sand and and zinc and copper and you know gold and silver i mean there is it's a there's an unlimited amount of things you can use as money uh in the in the physical commodity side and in the in the cryptocurrency side the key is which ones are are the best which are the best ones which ones will survive and which will die off I think uh, when, when it comes to supply and demand, Bitcoin blows away gold and silver. Absolutely. Nobody, nobody knows how much gold and silver is out there. And you can always find more gold and silver. They're talking about mining underwater now. They're talking mm-hmm. about mining asteroids. They're talking about mining other planets for silver. They're even talking about inventing a way to create gold and silver from thin air like they do. You know, they can create diamonds now. Uh artificial diamonds and you can do the same thing theoretically and with silver and gold C- create the atoms from energy wow so I, I i don't see any limitation on the amount of silver and gold out there now bitcoin on the other hand is limited to 21 million coins i mean there's there's no way of getting around that that is what everybody in the system likes about it so they will continue to keep that and unless someone gets 51 percent of control of bitcoin it'll stay that way yeah and so i mean the supply uh scarcity issue is so much better with bitcoin you understand it you know it and and with gold especially gold's been hidden from the people for so long you know, there's millions of tons of gold out there that's not 180,000 tons. I've proven it time and time again, and I'll continue to prove it. We hide more gold in the ground in the United States than has ever been thought to be above ground in the world. We put them in national uh, resource wildlife preserves. Chocolate Mountain in Southern California, Diane Feinstein locked that baby up so tight because it had the largest gold uh, deposit known at the time and it was it was common knowledge that it was there and then 
she locked it up in to the desert wildlife preserve to save the you know spotted toad and <laughs> all that gold just sits and waits for us so there's gold all over the grand canyon that they've been uh hiding from us it's interesting they say 98 percent of all the caves in the grand canyon have never been explored because the uh the uh national park service won't let anybody go there wow yeah i didn't know that well you know it would at a certain point it would have been crazy to think that bitcoin would surpass the spot price for gold and i know you've been calling for silver to surpass gold spot price uh eventually and uh you know, after seeing what we've seen in cryptos and, and just massive moves in price action, you know, it sets the precedence for almost anything to happen because we're so used to just assets trading within a trading range and just moving up exactly. a little bit, exactly. moving yeah. down and getting that experience of gold mo or Bitcoin moving from the triple digits to a thousand and then fifteen hundred and then for it just to keep going up, that was I, I think that was good for you know regardless whether or not you experienced it or not you saw it and you know that it's possible and, and I think that that gave a lot of people you know potentially some confidence in that it could happen in gold and silver here and in this case silver well, it could happen in gold and silver you see the the bubble is is not in the cryptocurrencies the bubble is in the unbacked fiat money being printed sure. and the derivatives being thrown at gold and silver so if you take those away it's going to take a shutdown of the comex and a shutdown of the lbma for gold and silver ever ever to to trade freely and the moment they trade freely they're going to trade in relation to the amount of unbacked fiat money and and derivatives of fiat money out there that is going to be a monumental move and nobody really knows the the true fair market value of gold or silver in relation to its peers in relation to other currencies because it hasn't been allowed to trade freely and it's, it's sad but it's true that's what made america great is the rigging of the markets and the takeover of of countries natural wildlife or natural preserves natural uh uh, resources. The the amazing thing is that you look at the United States, and we have gone into so many countries and raped and pillaged through uh, economic hitmen type of stuff. Uh, John Perkins's book is a great tell all of how the United States came to be, you know, this big powerhouse. It was from stealing people's uh, natural resources. We'd rather use everybody else's before we use our own because we know. They're limited. Mm. And the moment that people stop taking this unbacked fiat money is the moment that we're going to need natural resources and no one will trade with us because they'll all hate us. So, <laughs> so we're getting to that moment really soon. <laughs> well, Bix, hey, I appreciate your time coming on the, the show with me today. Uh, if people want to learn more about um, what you do, the, the work you do, and how to make silver great again, uh, tell them, <laughs> <laughs> tell tell everybody wh where they will go and what they'll find. Sure, and and, and on that note, uh, Trump knows exactly what I'm talking about. He he, he when he, as soon as he went into the Oval Office, he changed the curtains from red to gold. So we all know what's about to happen. Um, oh, to, wait, so so what, what do you what do you mean by that? No, he look at the Oval Office curtains when Obama was in there versus the color of them now that Trump got in there. <laughs> and you think that's significant in terms of uh, oh, yeah. the actual the actual gold market? Trump knows everything that goes on in the comics. He was a subscriber to the Road to Ruta at one point in time. Are you joking? At least, oh at least somebody God. somebody with his name was. And it could have been him, but it, you know who knows. But yeah, Trump knows everything. It's not like these guys get in office and, and you know they're just learning. Oh my God, the stock market's rigged. No, yeah. they know it all. And they're either going to participate in the rigging, which is, you know, Trump hires Steve Mnuchin. That's he, Steve Mnuchin, our current Treasury Secretary, was the head of IT for Goldman Sachs. Mm. That tells you how much computer rigging is going on right now. <laughs>